Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church Ministries. If you're joining us at our Pendleton campus today, you may have noticed we have a new way for everyone to check in. As you came in the main doors of the worship center today, you may have seen Riley there to get you checked in. Good morning. Welcome to church. Let's get you checked in. What's your name? Harper. Okay. Is that you? Yes. You're all checked in. Okay. If you didn't get checked in as you came into the worship center, you can simply open your Church Connect app and click check in to let us know you joined us today. This goes for our online viewers as well. Visitors or those who don't have a Church Connect login can just fill out the About You form to let us know you're with us. And of course, you can always view the order of worship, submit a prayer request, and even give online as well. Brianna's Hope is coming to our Ingalls campus. Pastor Mary has been working with Marcus Dennis and the Fortville chapter to see what it would look like to join together as one. This would be the Fortville Ingalls chapter of Brianna's Hope. While Pastor Mary will be leading when we host, this takes a number of volunteers to be successful in ministry. Think about how you could be a friendly, welcoming face, a voice of simple encouragement, or maybe even help prepare a meal for the gatherings. Please reach out to Pastor Mary to let her know how you can help be the love as part of this wonderful ministry. Hey girls, are you ready for Vacation Bible School this year? Yeah! Folks, consider ways that you can serve at Vacation Bible School this year. It'll be held Monday, July 11th to Thursday, July 14th at six o'clock in the evening at our Pendleton campus. This is a wonderful community outreach that fulfills our call to reach those within our community. But it takes a number of volunteers to make it a meaningful experience. So let Pastor Susan know in what ways you can serve or click the VBS volunteer interest form on our Church Connect page to let her know as well. As a leadership team, we have been refocusing our vision on intentional discipleship. What we have learned is that discipleship begins with relationship. If we are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ, it is imperative that we build good relationships with each other. Steve and Pam Shug have been working on this piece in the form of a small group ministry. These groups would provide a space for intentional relationship building and spiritual forming on our discipleship journey. We encourage everyone to be a part of this ministry. You can fill out a form on our Church Connect page letting us know you are interested in being in a small group. There will also be a time to make that commitment during a worship service in the weeks to come. With this ministry launching soon, some ministry leaders will begin to prayerfully discern with each other and with you on who to connect you with. As we all begin to refocus our lives on being good disciples and carrying out our mission into the world, we have to remember our why. Why am I here? What brought me to this place? Why do I participate and worship at either campus each week or even online? Why do I continue to serve the people of God? What keeps me coming back time and time again? Truly and deeply think about these questions as you rediscover your why. In the coming weeks, we will ask some of you to share that with everyone. If you have an interest in sharing your why so that others can hear about the life-saving love of Jesus Christ, reach out to me and I'll make sure your story is told. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We hope you enjoy your worship experience. morning. Now you were talking very well before the service and since I said good morning you kind of went quiet. Good morning. Good morning. Okay you online people yell at us too. I'm gonna do it one more time. This time wave to someone. Ready? Good morning. Good morning. We're glad you're here. We are First United Methodist Church Ministries. We are One Vision, two campuses, Pendleton and Ingalls, we're here to worship God and feel the presence, whether we are in person or online. Let us receive some moments of centering music.
Good morning, people of faith, and thank you for joining us for worship today. I'm so glad to see familiar faces, some faces we haven't seen in a little while, some new faces, and I'm sure plenty of folks even online. I've seen we've, uh, some of our regulars and some new people joining us as well. We're so glad that you're all here to worship with us today. Please stand as we call out to God to open up the heavens to join us in this place that the Holy Spirit may permeate us as we worship today. Join me for our opening prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the sunshine, the promise of warmer weather. But most importantly, we thank you for your presence that we can feel here with us today. Help us to see you today through our worship, through our prayers, through our songs, through our tears, Lord. We lay it all down for you today, and we ask just to see you. In your heavenly name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Please join us as we sing this timeless hymn, this reminder that God is always with us, just as he was with Jesus in the garden before he was betrayed.
I'd like for us to sing that chorus. Just hear your voices. But I want us to sing out and let that be an additional time of prayer for us. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his home and the joy Thanks be to God. I'd like to share with you the scripture this morning. Then after the scripture, I'm going to ask you to join in singing the refrain of Because He Lives. It's a time where we need to hear God in our heart, in our mind. I'm going to share the scripture from Psalm 37, 1 through 11, and then jump to 39 and 40. Hear the word of the Lord. Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and joy and enjoy peace and prosperity. And going to the end of the chapter, the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. I'm going to ask us to sing Because He Lives the first time with music, the second time with without the accompaniment. Glory to 
God. This time, I invite the children to leave to go to Sunday school. I think it's okay every once in a while to say pray for the teachers and the students. Before we get involved in our our offering time and thank you, I just feel led at this moment to have a special prayer for, for Mary Ackerman. Mary's failing in health. And that's Nancy's daughter and Rachel's sister. And I just ask that you pour your concentrated prayer for Mary. So just this moment, reach out in your prayer mode and ask God to touch Mary and touch Nancy and the family. I don't typically call single people out to do that but she's losing her battle with cancer and I think it's more than appropriate to say Nancy we got you we love you you've loved us for years and we love you let's spend some quiet time while the music plays and just reflect upon that that one moment that one person just now God, touch us in this holy moment. May we lift up Mary Ackerman in prayer. Be with the family. Anoint them with your comfort. Lord, because you live, we can face the next days. Give them the strength to handle the next days. In Jesus' name, amen. of this world. There are moments that overwhelm us and feel like that we're defeated. But God's saying, you got this because I've got you. I'm loving you all along the way. It's not been easy living in a world of turmoil of hurt, heartache, pain. We didn't ask to receive this, but yet in the middle of it, it's easy to get down. So I pray that whatever physical ailment you have, you give it to God. 
whatever emotional turmoil you're experiencing, you release it to the kingdom. Whatever peace that is going on in your life, you surrender and trust God because that's what we have. When we break down our faith, it is God with us. So God, help us. Help us to be the people of faith. I think God's telling us to just stop and hear the voice of God saying, trust me, I will be with you. Not just to the end of the worship service, but to the end of time. Oh Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus lifting up these thoughts, these words, these ideas, the feelings, all of them. We're giving it to you. Asking you to fill us with your sense of presence and hope and comfort and peace. Help make us be the people of God that you've called us to be. Help us to be the person you've asked us to share with one another. And Lord, more importantly, help us to live out in confidence your love in us, through us, with us, to others. And we are guided in prayer by what you have taught us to pray and say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Trust. Trust is a word that rolls off our mouth sometimes, and we really don't understand its full impact until we're involved in it. If I asked a couple of volunteers to come up and do a trust thing with me, would you come? 
not knowing what it is? What if I said it was going to be a trust fall? Have any of you participated in that? A trust fall is simply to build relationship, to build character, to, to build camaraderie and collegiality. You do it sometimes in retreats. And typically, a trust fall is hopeful that everyone will trust one another. And the whole idea of someone stands in front and two or a couple more people will stand behind them. And then the people behind them say, okay, on the count of three, you just lean back and we'll catch you. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? Now, if I had a couple of people like, say, Leona and Nancy, it, I'm not going to ask you to come forward. But if I asked you to come forward and catch me, What would be the trust level that you would say, not going to do that? Or you would say, well, I'm going to try, Pastor, but I kind of think I know what the outcome's going to be. Thud. And there would be a seismic response to Pendleton. Sometimes trust means you need to know the level of trust that you can offer and the trust that you can give. I'm here today to tell you that you can trust in God in all fullness. And God's going to say, I got you. I love you. I've already shown that by giving you Jesus and presenting the Holy Spirit into your heart and mind and lives. It's easy to trust but it's also very difficult at times to trust because sometimes we hinge our trust on by what happens in our lives. You understand? It's easy to trust when all things are going well. But as soon as something happens to disrupt your trust, I don't, I don't know if I can trust you anymore. I don't know if I can believe in that connected level. Now, I don't know how many of us have said, oh, I want to get up this morning and I want to be in a serious auto accident. Or I want to go to the doctor and find out something strangely wrong with me. Who does that? I don't think anyone does. But we're asked to pick up the pieces of what has happened and what's currently occurring and make the best of it. To be a person of trust means to go all in and to say, Lord, you're going to have to help me because there are times I don't trust myself. To have enough strength, courage, personal spiritual investment to get through. Now the passage in Psalms is saying, don't, don't fret, it's going to be okay. Well, it's easy to say that when you're not going through stuff. But when you're going through stuff, it's like, Lord, where are you? You said you would, not let, you would never leave me or forsake me. Well, I needed you here and I didn't feel you. I didn't have your presence. And God says, I was there. You just didn't see me. Or you didn't wait for me. Or you didn't hear me. Trust, I've been told, is something that you have to earn. Now that's with individuals. We trust one another because they have been okay in the past, and we can count on them to respond. And sometimes that works out, sometimes it doesn't. But God says, put your trust in me. And let me give you the tools to share that trust with someone else. 
If I asked you this morning, and online and in person, how many of you are here because you just said, I'm just going to go. Some of you may have said, that, that was me. So why did you first come here? Or why did you first connect to the church? My hunch is you trusted someone enough that they may have invited you. It could be you just showed up on your own and said, I'm going to go and see what this experience is like. And after being here, you may have felt comfortable, connected, and you said, I'm going to, I'm going to hang with this group of people. They're, they're okay, and I understand they feed people every once in a while. So that's a good thing. You know, as you and I met this, we're supposed to eat. So there's that. The very first few times I came to church, I was invited because it was food. I know, I've stayed, haven't I? But I came first for an ice cream social, then I came for a pizza party, and then I started seeing the people because they paid attention to me. And after a period of time, I trusted them to help me in my journey of faith. And at that moment in time, I was the only one out of my household that started attending church again. When I was growing up, my parents stopped going because of an issue at church. And I just felt like I needed something more. And so I went. But I didn't go on my own. It took people to invite me to come. Little did I know as a sophomore in high school, being asked to go to an ice cream social, I would be entering my 37th year, thir okay, longer than that, 38th year of ministry. I did that because I trusted the one of whom I believe. I trust in God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. There's a creed out there like that. I ask you to go search that and find it. But just don't believe in me. Believe in God, that God has the wherewithal to give you all the necessary tools. God is the one who can provide, comfort, bless, empower, equip. This morning, and I don't know how it showed up, but I call it prevenient grace. There was a statement of 31 God is statements, and it was on the podium here. Whoever left this, I think it was God, minute for me to share with you. I'm not going to read all of them, of which you're eternally grateful. But I'm just going to highlight a couple. God is faithful. God forgives. God is good. There's a phrase that goes after that. God is great. God is good. And we thank him for our food. By his hands we all are fed. Give this Lord our daily bread. Anyone else know that? Are you hungry now? Okay. God heals. God is our hope. God is love. God is merciful. God saves. God is trustworthy. God is unchangeable. God is with us right now. God is with us. The scripture says a very present help in a time of trouble or need. God is with us. I don't know about you, but since moving up to this area 
God has enabled me to enhance my prayer life driving on Interstate 465. Can I hear an amen? There have been times when I have felt myself white knuckling the steering wheel and I've said these words, Dear Jesus, because I've learned that that's the best response. If I said other words, it would not be godly. Been there, done that? We're put up in immediate reaction mode sometimes. We have to be careful and safe. And we always have to look out for what might occur. It's not just about driving, it's living. We need to be careful to see what's around us. But not just that, we also need to be willing to see the potential and the opportunities around us. I had a person the other day and I was in Needler's uh, parking lot area. I was going to the store to pick up bananas. And as I was pulling closer, there was a car that just pulled right out. Did not even look, but just pulled right out. And so what did I say? Dear Jesus. And then under my breath, I wanted to say, I didn't. I didn't go there. But I thought, if you would have just looked, you would have seen that my vehicle was coming toward you. And it wasn't at one of those seven different stop signs that you have to make. Okay, I exaggerated a little bit. In front of Needlers. But had I not been paying attention, there could have been an alternative situation. Sometimes we get hit from behind. We didn't plan on it, but it happens. And we have ramifications after that. We get hit from behind, not just in a vehicle, but sometimes we get stabbed in the back or people talk behind our back and we get wind of it and it hurts us. And then we allow that to be the driver of our pain for the day. And, and I say no more. Don't allow the negative to interrupt what you could be for someone else. So be the person of positive spiritual influence. Trust in the God Almighty to give you the strength, the courage, the actions, and the words and the heart to make a difference. Trust God. The scripture says, trust in the Lord with what? With half of your heart? With part of your heart? No, it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge God and God will direct your paths, or in another translation, will make your road straight. An undeniable path. So what's missing? You say, well, I love God. I, I trust God most of the times. I'm a person of faith. I've attended church. But what have you done for Jesus recently? When have you been of service of God, for God, with God, and through God to someone else? It's not us up to us to judge the reaction of when we give, when we serve. It's up to us to serve, to have a servant's heart. We've been talking about a phrase about being the love. You're going to hear more about that a lot. Be means to do, to be in action. Not just sit back 
and wait. It's an active participant. So when I say be the love, I'm asking you to be an active participant of your faith in your daily walk with God and how you deal with one another. That's how you trust. When we trust one another, we learn how to develop relationships in a more focused environment. This past week, I trusted that there was a communication that went to everyone in, in the office, and it didn't. And I assumed that it was shared among everyone else, but it wasn't. So you know what that means? When you assume, I'm not going to give you the definition. But you assume, and it was something mild and trivial, but yet, when we don't fully communicate, not everyone is informed, and you feel left out. And then I felt a little miserable. So I asked the person, sorry, forgiveness, and I know deep down I didn't have to, but I chose to because in order for me to feel right in my spirit, I needed to do that. What's God wanting you to write in your spirit? Well, the scripture says trust. Trust in God first. And then learn how to trust in yourself. And then begin to trust in others. You kind of get the theme for today's message? Trust? Let's start living that out. Let's have a word of prayer. Oh Lord, create within us a level and a development of who we are for you. Let us trust your leaning and nudging to help us be the person you've called us to be. Help us to trust in our instincts, our inspiration, our focus, so that we can truly be a person of faith. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. You know, the literal phrase for amen means, so be it. And I'm going to twist it around, let it be so in each one of us. As we trust God, as we trust God this week, today, tomorrow, for eternity, even in the darkest times, the hardest times to trust, we know that God is always with us. Please join us as we close today singing praise to God, for he is always with us. Join us, God, with us. Stand. If you wish.
As we go our separate ways, may we be the people of God, in the presence of God, reaching one another for God. Amen. Such a tiny offering compared